The two-stage hoteling model gives us some intuition as to why firms have an incentive to maximally differentiate their products in anticipation of softening price competition later on. But it's not a great model to think about how new firms might enter a market where they can differentiate their products. For that, we turn to what we'll call the circle model. We begin with the hoteling line of product characteristics and imagine taking that line and bending it into a circle. So that instead of a line, we have a circle of possible product characteristics that firms might choose. Just as in the hoteling model, we'll assume that consumers have ideal points around that circle. So a consumer might have an ideal point here, which means that that's the product characteristic the consumer would most like. And the consumer becomes worse off as the product characteristics move away from that ideal point. And also, just like in the hoteling model, we'll assume that consumers are uniformly distributed in terms of their ideal points around that circle. So at each point in the circle, there's an equal number of consumers. We'll then define a two-stage game, where in stage one, the circle is initially empty, and firms decide whether to enter and in particular whether to pay a fixed cost to enter and if so where to enter what product characteristic to choose So firms can enter this market, but they have to pay a fixed entry cost to set up their shop. Once they've entered, that fixed entry cost becomes a sunk cost and is no longer relevant. But it is relevant at that initial stage. Firms have to decide, is it worth paying that fixed cost to enter this market? Then in stage two, so this was stage one, in stage two, firms set their prices. And what we'll do is we'll try to think of what is the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in this game. So as with any subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we start at the bottom of the game tree. In this case in stage two. Stage two is a simultaneous move game where all the firms are setting their prices. And it's reasonable to assume that in stage one, whatever number of firms entered the circle, they will have equally spaced around that circle because they will maximally differentiate their products from others. And so they will, will be trying to be as far away from competitors as possible in order to increase their market power. So in equilibrium, that should result in firms spacing themselves equally around that circle. As a result, each firm really only has two competitors. Because when you think of the consumers that have ideal points here, they're going to choose between these firms. They're not going to go to firms across the circle. So each firm has two competitors, one on each side. And the degree of market power that a firm has depends on how close those competitors are. In other words, how many firms have entered the circle. So as we think about stage two, the price setting stage, we can see that the price that firms are going to be able to set in equilibrium will depend on how many firms have entered in the first stage. So there'll be a Nash equilibrium price that depends on the number of firms that have entered. And since all the firms are equally spaced and each has two competitors, they all face exactly the same incentives, the same economic environment. And so in equilibrium, they'll be best responding to each other with the same prices. So there'll be a price function that depends only on the number of firms that have entered. That's the solution to stage two of this game. Now, in stage one, firms can anticipate what that price function looks like. 
they know what prices they're going to be able to charge depending on how many firms have entered. And so the only way firms are going to enter is if, given the prices that are going to happen, they can make a profit. They can make a profit that's larger than the fixed entry cost. So the profit in stage two doesn't include the fixed entry cost because by stage two that's a sunk cost. But the profit they make in stage two in order for them to enter has to be at least as big as the fixed entry cost, in which case the profit from entering is at least zero. So firms will enter so long as profit in stage two is at least as large as that fixed entry cost of entering the market. And in equilibrium, the number of firms that enters has to be such that for those firms that enter, this is true. But if one more firm would have entered, this would no longer be true. Profit would be less than the fixed entry cost, which is why no additional firms entered. So this condition yields the equilibrium number of firms. So N stands for the equilibrium number of firms. Now, in equilibrium, more firms will enter the lower that fixed entry cost. Fewer firms will enter the higher that fixed entry cost. So we can now see what the general nature of that equilibrium is going to be. Firms inside So firms inside the industry, firms that have entered, they are going to be making a profit that's greater than or equal to the fixed entry cost. Firms outside, firms that didn't enter, would make a profit less than the fixed entry cost if they entered. So an equilibrium is a situation where no one wants to change what they do in this case, firms inside are happy they entered. Firms outside wouldn't want to enter. As that fixed entry cost falls, the number of firms that enter is going to rise because it will be easier to meet this condition. So there will be more firms spread around that circle. If that fixed entry cost becomes zero, you'd end up with a firm at every single point of the circle, in which case no firm would actually have any more market power. And as a result, perfect competition would result. Price would become equal to marginal cost. But as that fixed entry cost rises, eventually there's only a single firm. That enters, which implies we have a monopoly. So if that fixed entry cost rises far enough, we have a barrier to entry that keeps competitors out and we've reached the case of monopoly. So you can see now, as we change that fixed entry cost, we move from, say, starting with a really high fixed entry cost where there's only a single firm and a monopoly, we move to a case where you have two firms, three firms, four firms, eventually a much larger number of firms, and eventually as that fixed cost falls to zero, so many firms that you end up with perfect competition. So we found a second way of filling the gap between perfect monopoly and perfect competition. We have firms that differentiate their products but engage in price competition and that enter that circle of product differentiation as that fixed cost falls in greater and greater numbers. And we can span the whole spectrum between monopoly and perfect competition. Just as we could with quantity competition when we increase the number of firms, eventually as that number of firms gets really large, we converge to the perfectly competitive outcome of price equal to marginal cost.